Okay, so last time we were in here, I added storage to my gaming Unraid box. Um, I've got a 3900X in here. I had two GPUs. I removed one, just down to a single 1660 Ti. And honestly, I don't need as many cores anymore. So I managed to pick up a 5600X and six core, 12 threads. So I'm cutting the cores and threads in half, but it is much faster. Um, it's much faster per core. So hopefully I'll see a good performance boost out of this. I'm only gonna run one VM, um, and just a couple of lightweight Docker containers. Uh, so we're gonna swap this guy out. And the plan is to sell the 3900X for what I bought this for. So it should be a good deal for whoever wants a 3900X. Um, other than that, I can't remember what storage I added last time, but I've got two 1.2 terabyte uh, 10K drives in RAID 0 that have been pretty good, honestly. And uh, I've been using those for game storage. I'm gonna continue to use those. Um, so outside of this, I don't really think there's anything else I'm gonna do in this video. Uh, just remove the cooler, clean it off, swap it. Um, I've got the Wraith uh, Prism in here right now. So let's see if I can get this guy out far enough where I can open the lid. Yeah, here we go. Uh, let me see if I can see what I'm doing here. So, a uh, little dusty. I'll probably blow this out later. Um, but yeah. Almost completely full of hard drives now. So I have one free bay. Uh, 14 are in use. Uh, they're all 10s and 12s. And then I've got the two little SAS drives down here. And LSI SAS card down here. Um, so we should have some room to upgrade down the road. And again, the plan is to take the 1080 Ti out of my main gaming rig and replace it with, uh, replace this card, the 1660 Ti. And even though the 1080 Ti doesn't have as good of an encoder as the 1660 Ti, um, I'm gonna look forward to the better game performance. It should look pretty good too. It's uh, not bad. So I think I also have uh, yeah, I do have 64 gig of RAM in here. I might, I might take out half of it. I really don't need this much. Um, that's pretty easy to do. So, you know what, I'll just leave that in there for now. Um, we do need to remove the heat sink. So, literally just pull this lever up. AMD heat sinks are pretty easy. So this is the uh, Wraith Prism. This is like their top of the line <laughs> integrated or stock cooler. Uh, it's pretty good. I'm just gonna kinda set it there. I've already updated the BIOS. Um, I was on version like 804 or something like that. And they're on version 3000 something. So, I was a little bit out of date. <laughs> 800 something was the, what the board came with. Um, updating the BIOS is pretty easy. You just put it on a FAT32 formatted USB drive and use the easy flash utility uh, that's in the BIOS. All right, just got thermal paste everywhere. That's eh, whatever, it doesn't matter. So yes, fancy new 5600X. I ordered this from B&H. And uh, it took until now to get it, like literally today, which is the 9th, December 9th. And um, I pre-ordered this. So before it was even released, it was like two days before it was released, I pre-ordered it and it took until now, which was way too long. Um, I'm good, just going to uh, lift up the retention lever. I'm not actually gonna remove the CPU yet. I do wanna sort of open this and just kind of do like a hand in hand swap. It's probably gonna be the easiest thing. Uh, 
honestly, I don't know if I'd rather, I don't know if I prefer AMD's pins on the uh, CPU versus Intel's pins on the motherboard. I think I prefer the pins on the motherboard because motherboards are pretty cheap nowadays. Whereas CPUs like 5950X, 5900X, I mean, even the 5600X is 300 bucks. That's not cheap. This motherboard was only 250, um, but I'm sure you can get a replacement motherboard on eBay for like, I don't know, 180 bucks, something like that. So I don't even know if this was G-Lib. I think this might have been stock thermal paste. Um, I'm just gonna, you know, I could take rubbing alcohol and clean it, but this thing was running right up until I turned the camera on. So it's pretty warm and it's coming off pretty easily. Do you have my handy tube of G-Lid GC Extreme? Put a good amount down here. See if I can clean up any of the uh, stray thermal paste here. Oh well. So now we just kind of do the uh, reverse here. Yeah, I guess this video is not gonna be too long. It's hopefully it just works, you know, it turns on and all that. But I'll let you know how it goes. I'm pretty excited to use this CPU. I had considered using it on my desktop for a while um, and taking it, taking this whole setup and swapping it over to my desktop and then swapping my desktop into here. But the problem with that is um, I use Quick Sync to stream and with Ryzen, I wouldn't have Quick Sync. So it's kind of a, kind of a no-go for me. But I think I'm doing okay with the 50, or excuse me, I'm, I think I'm doing okay with the uh, 9900KS in my desktop. I don't think I really need to change it. All right, well, there's that lever down. And if I recall correctly, all these wires were just kind of chilling around the CPU cooler. Now was a good time to double check any of the cables, make sure they're all just in order. None of them are fried or failing. It's pretty rare that that would happen, but just give everything a good once over. And yeah, I guess I mean, that's pretty much it. And it's all sealed up in there nicely. Whoever gets that, I guess, is getting a uh, 5000 series sticker. What I will do is actually slide this guy back in and I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to see any of this, but I will plug it in. Oh, I gotta slide it in a little bit more. There's the power cord. Ethernet cable. Under the flash drive is here. And plug in the monitor for now. I usually have a dummy plug plugged into that. So we'll see what happens. Got that monitor plugged in down there. Turns on. Hopefully, see display. It'll be lovely. Yay! Well, that's booting. Check this thing out. New CPU installed. Please enter setup to configure 
Don't need to enter setup. Plug a keyboard in. Check this thing out. This thing is a $5 hard drive rack for some server. And I think it was like $6 to ship it. And the actual piece was $5, but you literally just take two and a half inch drives and then they slot in. I don't know if I talked about this in the last video, but even if I did, it's really cool. Um, I'll put a link in the description if you wanna pick up one of these. I just use it for storage. I'm sure it goes in some sort of server because it almost fits nicely like that. But, I don't know. And then you fit another two and, a half in, two and a half here and actually a three and a half on top of it. But I kind of use this to like carry it like this. But it's just kind of handy. I've got a couple two terabyte hard drives, cheap SSDs. Uh, just helps me keep track of where things are. I might actually buy a second because I have a couple more laying around. Um, Everything looks fine. Let's see. Let's do a save and quit and see what happens here. Mm. I need to adjust my boot order. Hi, kitty. Hi. What are you doing? Getting in trouble? Can you say hi? Oh. Okay. What? What? Wait. Did I put the right USB drive in? Did it? Uh, hi, buddy. What? What are you, what are you doing? No, reset all my settings. That looks a little more normal. Like the hard drive rack? There we go. What are you doing in there? Huh? <laughs> okay, well, it's booting, so I guess all that's left to do is just evaluate how it performs, and I'll put this thing back together, and uh, I will probably report back in some sort of forum thread or just update. And uh, yeah, I guess that's it for now. I'll see you guys next time.